Hello, hello. So, I wanted to share this because uh, it inspired me, and I was inspired uh, by by many things, uh, many people talking about deep things lately. Uh, and not just talking; um, talk is cheap. Right? But uh, whenever you feel these things, that's the real deal. So whenever I'm picking up that more and more people are feeling certain things, that is what really inspires me to go ahead and, and do something. Create, create motion create an image so this is going to be talking about those books <laughs> those those wondrous books the ringing cedars of Russia and the ideas set forth um, so if you do decide to read these books or look into them try and realize and recognize if, if you can't just completely allow your heart to open up to them and feel beyond the words and have these words remind you, have the specific resonances and word choices and images touch you very deeply. If you can't do that, try and suspend for a moment your ideologies. And the best way to do this and how it's recommended to read these books is to go out in nature, to, to be in a natural setting where you're in uh, pristine as you can find a clean air space and you're you're in the living matrix you're not in the matrix of confusion or illusion or manipulation and if you are then I recommend Meditating deeply before you engage in these books, getting very in tune with your heart before you start. Looking at the natural order brings us to relationships in the family. Anastasia said, Restoration of love to families is as key in the creation of Earth's bright future. How do we do this? It looks to me that society is being led in the opposite direction towards the complete breakdown of the family. Who is leading this change and why? And who benefits? Anastasia described our long ago elaborate rituals with. And if you don't think that's the case, then you just haven't really woken up to. Uh, the multi-layered agenda of what's going on with uh, the corruption and manipulation and how it begins with the family structure. So once that's taken out, then it's going to be easier and easier to convince people of all these logical fallacies of all the scientism shite and this is pretty much like the worst that it's going to get and as far as um, if you're someone that actually like fucking feels like the heart of hearts and you take a look at what's going on 
in the world. Uh, it's it, it really fucking hurts to see so many people caught up in something that should be so obvious. And it's not about learning the right thing. It's not about an education system. The indoctrination system is doing its job. People are being led further and further away and astray from the truth of the heart and the truth of the mother and the father and the brothers and the sisters and how we're all one, one mind, one heart, one love. That may sound hippy dippy, new agey, whatever. It's the fucking truth. And it's not my truth. It's just, it's just truth. It's, it's a felt, and a felt experience and awareness. It's gnosis. And everyone has access to this. If you start healing, and dissolving the barriers around your heart that you've put there yourself. Yes, maybe something has happened to you and traumas keep happening. Uh, cycles keep repeating. But we must recognize we are the ones placing these barriers around our minds, around our hearts. And once we really decide to get clean and clear those barriers dissolve and we have to feel and that's going to be painful for part of the process but then you're going to go come through with the fucking pain you're going to come in to the love and then it's just all you can really do is laugh it's, it's tears tears of joy and tears of laughter for what you're able to see and experience yes you see you see the corruption on a new level, but you see it for what it really is. You don't take pity upon anyone. You see why things are happening and the root causalities of why those things are happening and that everyone, every single person must take it upon themselves to reconnect with the heart. One thing that's mentioned in the books is um, pain and people's uh, diseases and illnesses and how this is a direct communication with that individual and if you want to call it God or Creator the all that is the divine intellect. So, whenever someone wants to treat you or give you healing, they are stepping, they are becoming an intermediary between the message that is happening with you and God. Realize this. Realize how this is happening on so many fucking levels. Now uh, this has been one of the main uh, things to where the trick happened. Where the corruption was able to slide its way in. Become the intermediary. And then all of a sudden we hold that thing on high. It tricks us into thinking that that is the creator. That That is where the message is coming through. It disempowers the fact that we all have communion with, with the all that is in every moment. We just forgot how to listen. We forgot how to read from the book of life within and without. So this remembering process is remembering how to sit in silence, 
how to listen, how to feel again, how to heal again. The healing comes through the feeling, and we can hear it more potently in the silence. Because in that solitude, the connection is going to be very clear. And it'll become more and more clear the more we cultivate an awareness of what is what. What we really are, what, what's really fucking going on inside of us. Then we can start to see what's really going on outside of us. Then we can start to dissolve the barriers between those two things. Dissolve the separations. Bella to facilitate finding one's soulmate. There was no question of intimate relations before marriage. <sighs> Elaborate rituals. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, elaborate in that if one looks at it um, in a current mindset and mind state that we are in now and we look at how things used to be, yes, it may seem elaborate. And yes, there is always, like, back in the days of the pagans and the magans, paws and maws, that were intimately connected with nature within and without. Uh, there, was, there was no, there was none of this. There was no confusion of, of who they were, of how things worked, of the stars and the cycles and the systems. There, there was no questioning. Why was there no questioning of this? And it's not to say that a questioning is, is a bad thing because in, in the time that we're in right now, we have to keep questioning things and understanding. But ultimately, you have to come to the realization that you are the answer, and the answer is within the question. So you have to start to answer your own questions and realize that the answer you seek is within the question that you speak. So. Things were just um, known because because it, it was pure gnosis. So um, everything was shared, and um, I wouldn't say everything was known, but uh, the cycles and patterns of nature were were known and engaged and celebrated and honored. But uh, finding finding one's uh, quote unquote soulmate, that was just the process of um, right time, right place, right connection. So whenever it was time for a human to to, whenever they felt the call inside that they needed to find their mate. They, they would go to a gathering or something of this nature and and find them. And if they didn't, then it gets a little bit more interesting. Uh, <laughs> they would kind of send uh, these little boats, uh, paper boats or paper uh, <laughs> messages in a bottle down the streams, down the rivers. And uh, they, they were saying like w what settlement they were in, and they would just um, synchronistically, magically be uh, found by a certain youth, and they would connect. And yes, like that says the intimate relations, and not even before marriage, at this point in time that we're talking about, um, that was not on the mind at all, because the corruption was not 
and yeah, that's going to get into like a whole other topic about sex and uh, the purpose of that, if that's really even needed. And then that also kind of, uh, you can transform sex into tantric, but then that, that, it's just layers, you know, um, intimacy, uh, tantric intimacy, and then you get to a point where you don't need, uh, you connect on such a deep level, like, there's no, there's really no thought of, uh, wasting that kind of energy, because you go, you go into the direct experience and the direct connection, so you, you intimately go into bliss and connect in that way. You, you don't need to have, uh, like, intercourse or whatever. Especially when it comes on this level, where we're talking about uh, families and creating uh, a child. Um, the only thing that was on the mind in, in those times were co-creation. And uh, the meld, the heart melding, and the mind melding that happens with the two parents, the two individuals. And then the creation that happens. It's a creation of a vessel, but it's a, it's a allowance of a spirit to come in. And the purer that vessel is, the more of the connection points that are stabilized and established within the foundations of love, the foundations of the homeland, the foundations of between the two people, the foundations of the union, then that spirit is going to be more complete, as in it's going to have more aspects and awareness of what it really is. And then it's going to come into a vessel that is honored with truth. And an awareness of how shit works. Then, you get a, a true hue man of many colors, of much potency and awareness. In fact, the coming together, a union of man and woman to bring forth life, was a much more considered, a much more conscious act. Exactly. The couple to be would be engaged in the co-creation of their space of love upon the land in which they were going to raise their future family. The land where the love would grow and become manifest and be passed on through the generations. This grand plan would be much bigger than the couple themselves. They would become an extension of the creator's thought, feeling themselves at the centre of creation. The creator's thoughts could be seen all around us in nature. These can be read as the crystallised thoughts of God. And uh, this gets in uh, a little bit deeper stuff. And originally, uh, I was kind of inspired by uh, this Skylark's last video and her talks um, on, on some of this stuff. Uh, waking up to uh, the Creator within and without. And it... it it made me want, at first I wanted to read um, from these books about, and it's just, you know, it's it's words and it's a story, but it's also a image where you can connect your heart to it. And if, if your heart connects to an image, then you bring that shit to fucking life. And that's not to say that you can't do that with any kind of image, but um, you can't attach your heart to certain images. You can only do that to a certain extent, and that's why this this illusory bullshit is, is crumbling um, right before our eyes. It's because more and more people are connecting with the heart, and so the illusions that do not have that level of 
heart potency are not able to keep up with the speed of love. <laughs> that's that's just what it is. But I will save that read for another time. Because that, that gets into uh, the creation. Um, uh, basically, well, I'll just kind of you know, touch upon it real quick. Uh, it starts with uh, how God came about. How there was already a universe of, of certain essences and energies out there and God came about and connected and united all of these energies with a frequency word of God right the word so all of these essences and energies were all of a sudden united because they all had this like wave Form that they could now touch upon and ride and they found their way back to the origin point of that and they questioned and quizzed and wanted to know why what was the purpose what do you want and God replied Communion, divine contemplation, and so this is when God started creating for this purpose, and uh, God moves so fast and in such a quick pace within this creation that God became this creation and then an energy came about that made it everlasting and I'm not going to go any further because it's just my words at this point. <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather save it for whenever I read from from the book. Not that any book is, is of any more importance than, than any other book, but uh, learning how to read and remember from what's inside of your heart, that's, that's the true essence of these books, the remembrance. So the couple's joint creation on their land was a reflection of God's will on earth. This was their space of love. Anastasia said we are in fact the children of God, who has bestowed upon us the same abilities if our speed of thought could approach that of himself. But over the eons, man's speed of thought has been slowed down by desecration of the earth and further by man's increasingly selfish motives, ideas moving further from the truth. This dumbing down of man has taken us further away from our intended path. What has been the result of this? Just look at the world. Who has played a role in this? Who gains from this? The ultimate result of this is the complete breakdown of society. Witness the depression, the addiction, even suicide. This ugly creation of the world today is obvious for all to see. Exactly. I mean, I mean, this, this is kind of just at the point that I'm at where uh, I'm not looking to tell anyone anything or I mean I'll, I'll give little pointers and, and uh, way, way showers and whatnot but ultimately like the message I say for people that are still 
very much indoctrinated is that, or even if they're waking up a little bit, because if they're super indoctrinated, they're not going to feel the words that I say. So it, it, if they're waking up a little bit, they will feel some of my words, and then their indoctrination will come back in and convince them that uh, what they're feeling is not true because of the things that they have been led to believe in. Um, but a lot of people that I connect with on on here on YouTube, you guys feel with a uh, large a large amount of your heart, so you you've opened up a large amount. To where you are, you are able to feel beyond the words into the resonance and the vibration, the the essence of the image. But yeah, it's it it is obvious. This is what I say. It's it's in plain sight and it's obvious. And if you just Start digging a little deeper. It, it's it's pretty fucking obvious. Let's see if there's any more of that. So yeah, that's probably about it for now. Shout out to all you real motherfuckers who feel the real deal and have chosen to heal what's within so that you can see clearly what's going on out there. It is a process. It's not an easy one. It's oftentimes a very painful one. Oftentimes it's a very lonely one. Depending on your circumstance, you may find yourself very alone. You may find yourself within a family system and structure and you know the black sheep effect and still have family friends and still feel incredibly alone. That's not a bad thing by any means, because that means that you are waking up to the bullshit around you, but you're still engaging it, and that's why this this terror is happening inside of you, because you know that you need to get the fuck away from it. You need to pull yourself away from it. Find that place of solitude where you can really feel and heal. Remember how to listen again. 